Think of your body as a complex, constantly running factory. Metabolism is the sum of all the chemical processes that keep this factory alive. It has two main opposing functions, catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism is the process of breaking down large molecules into smaller ones to release energy. Anabolism is the process of using energy to build or synthesize complex molecules from simpler ones. The energy released from catabolism is used to power anabolism. You can't build anything without first breaking something down for fuel. The energy released from catabolizing food is captured and stored in a special molecule called adenosine triphosphate, ATP. Think of ATP as a rechargeable battery. It has a core and three phosphate groups. The bonds between these phosphate groups are high energy. When your cell needs energy, it breaks the bond holding the third phosphate group. This turns ATP into ADP and releases a burst of usable energy. Using energy from catabolism, the cell reattaches a phosphate group to ADP, turning it back into ATP. This continuous ATP-ADP cycle is the fundamental energy transfer mechanism of life. The raw materials for metabolism come from the food we eat, specifically the three macronutrients. Carbohydrates are the preferred and fast energy source. Fats are efficient long-term energy storage. Proteins serve as an emergency energy source and primary building material. Let's trace the catabolic journey of each macronutrient to become ATP. The goal is to turn glucose into ATP. One molecule of glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate. This process yields a small net gain of two ATP molecules. If oxygen is available, pyruvate enters the mitochondria. It is converted and fully broken down into carbon dioxide. This process doesn't make much ATP directly, but it loads up energy shuttles for the next step. This is where the bulk of ATP is made. The energy shuttles from the previous steps donate electrons to the ETC. This creates a proton gradient that powers an enzyme called ATP synthase. This process churns out a large amount of ATP from one glucose. Oxygen combines with electrons and hydrogen to form water. Glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain yield about 36 to 38 ATP per glucose. Triglycerides are broken down into glycerol and fatty acids. The fatty acid chains are chopped into a molecule called acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA enters the Krebs cycle and ETC, just like glucose-derived pyruvate. Fat molecules produce a much larger number of acetyl-CoA molecules. This is why fats are such an efficient energy store. Proteins are broken down into amino acids. The liver removes the nitrogen-containing amino group. The remaining carbon skeleton is converted into various intermediates. Depending on the amino acid, the carbon skeleton can be converted into pyruvate, acetyl-CoA, or Krebs cycle intermediates.